Our gospel lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, don't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull up, pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will come and tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Down to verse 36. Then he, then he left the crowd, went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their heaven. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today we are beginning with the parable of the wheat and the tares. And it follows last week where we left off about growing a good crop and good soil. But this parable has lost a little bit in its translation because the word used here as tares or weeds has a much stronger meaning, a much stronger word. The word is darnell. Darnell is a weed that looks like wheat and grows like a weed in the same fields as the wheat. And until modern machinery came along, it wasn't really possible to separate Darnell from wheat. And in some regions, it's referred to as a false wheat because of its similarity between the two plants. It looks like wheat until the crop appears. Its buds are slimmer than those of wheat, but wheat is brown when it's ripe. Darnell is black. And Darnell can be infected by a fungus. When it's eaten, it can cause you to be sick like you're drunk. It can be fatal. So Darnell contains a poisonous fungus that grows only in grains in the Middle East. And sowing Darnell among wheat was an act of revenge that was punishable by Roman law. So this parable told by Jesus probably described a real-life situation where the servants wanted to pull up the Darnell, but by doing so, they would ruin the wheat crop. 
Now, the Bible speaks only about harvesters or reapers. And they are the angels in heaven. This noun harvester is only used here in the Bible in verses 30 through 39. That's the only place you'll find it. And the verb for harvest or reap occurs 21 times in the Bible. That's all. But now realize, the untrained eye was no match for discovering Darnell among the wheat. The weeds you couldn't find out there in the wheat. But that's not going to be any problem for the angels Jesus is teaching in this parable because they're going to comb, comb through the wheat field row by row, plant by plant. Nothing will escape their eyes because they won't be using kitchen tools or gardening tools. They're going to be using an axe, a scythe, a sickle, a plow, a pitchfork, because angels are the true harvesters, chosen, qualified, fit for this job. People trying to harvest, they do it in vain. And Jesus goes on to say that on Judgment Day, two things are going to burn in the fire of hell. Chaff, which is Darnell, called tares. Chaff is a hull, the outer covering of the wheat. It doesn't weigh anything. It's light as nothing. The tear of the Darnell is full of nothing. Very light. All it does is take up space. It's an invader. But to understand this parable, you must understand that the wheat field of which Jesus was speaking is you. You're the wheat field. People are the wheat field in this parable. And the tares are the children of the wicked one, the devil. They offend. They scandalize. That's a Greek word. It means that they practice lawlessness. And the angels harvest those tares, the darnel, they bind them up, they tie them up, and they burn them. And the Bible doesn't take the devil's work lightly. There are 38 references to the devil who causes scandalous, ruthless, and shameful things. He's ill-natured. He's ill-bred, ill-mannered, ill-willed. He causes godly people to stumble. He splits the church. He changes good doctrine and alters true beliefs in God. That's the work of the devil. Now the Greek word scandal really is a trap. It's a snare. It's something that catches something. It's evil. And it its followers bring anarchy. They, they do damage. And they're not going to be stopped. They're not going to be checked. They're not going to be defeated. Because bad people scandalize. They're immoral. They practice lawlessness. And they do unlawful, unethical, and uncivil things. And isn't that what we're seeing in our country today? It's throughout the world. Lawless, unethical, uncivil activities are taking place every day by the hour. And it leads up to our text for today. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. John, I'm going to tell you about a little fourth grade boy. That's kind of in your area. He stood with his teacher in front of the blackboard. 
had a math problem on it. The boy hadn't finished it yet. The boy said to the teacher, I'm not an underachiever. You're an over-expector. And unfortunately, many Christians today are just like that little boy. They are underachievers in the faith, but at the same time they accuse God of being an over-expector of them. Setting His expectations too high for them. And this attitude affects our whole society today, especially in the educational circles. I've heard that some educators believe you shouldn't tell a child that their answer is wrong. You should encourage a child just for trying. Boost their self-esteem. Feel good about yourself is more important than getting the right answer. Everyone should be a winner. But shouldn't students feel good about themselves because they get the right answer? Yeah. Now this type of feel-good education has led America to become number one in illiteracy among developed countries. Why, in St. Louis, the St. Louis schools, only 10% of their students can read at grade level. 10%. And unfortunately, feel-good religion has crept into many Christian circles. A lot of Christians today are into what we call prosperity theology that teaches financial blessing and physical well-being are the will of God for you. Faith, positive speech, donations to a religious cause, usually the preachers, is going to increase their material wealth. They're going to make them rich. A lot of TV preachers preach this. It's a false gospel. And they preach a religion that makes you feel good about yourself rather than a religion that changes your life. In Galatians 6, verses 1 through 5, Paul said to those people in Galatia, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. My friends, a religion that does not transform every area of your life is a religion that's not worth having. And a child of God should know that. They should see and hear and hold the true gospel in their hearts and know the presence of angels in their lives. They should know about a spiritual kingdom. They should know what happens in the spirit and wait for the appearance of God's kingdom here on this earth, the day of God's harvest. And friends, it has come. It is here. The tares, the darnell, are entering the children of God just as Satan did with the apple in the Garden of Eden. But God's angels are here to protect them. Angels will deliver the children of God and minister to the children of God as God promised. And those who are in the faith of Jesus Christ will find angels present and tending to their needs. The Darnell, the tares, will not overtake you. They are not the children of God. They grew up with the children of God, but they are the tares, planted next to the good seed, trying to take everything over. But as Matthew told you in our lesson this morning, the kingdom of God 
is a kingdom of heaven, and is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while people slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also, so that the servants of the householder came and said, Sir, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the wheat has sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds appeared. And the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? He replied, an enemy did this. And the servants asked, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you pull up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time, I will tell the harvesters, first, collect the weeds, tie them together in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. You see, the tares, the bad stuff, the bad people will be burned. They weren't supposed to be in the harvest. The harvest is the Lord's. And the Lord your God is going to see to the burning of those tares as at the final harvest. Well, is that harvest time yet? No. But the fields are ready for harvest. So make this parable of the sower being a warning to you, you should be walking closer to the Lord in your everyday task. Everything you do, you should be walking closer to the Lord because tares are among us. And if you know you are the good seed, if this parable of the sower speaks to you, then you should know how God works in you so that you will grow up safe in the Lord and be his at the final harvest. That's the parable of the tares and the weeds. Amen.